only when your mind is empty you are not thinking about some uh, object or other matter you have no opinion then your mind is empty at that moment and only then you can feel God God is emptiness and the emptiness is most of the time filled overruled by the mind both are inside you emptiness as well as mind that's the play to conquer the mind to reach the emptiness and the emptiness is God and the mind is humanity they play that role it's God himself playing that role of separation so God's emptiness made the mind and went into that place that realm of thinking to, to discover between all the opinions and the mind stuff and all the, the, the dusty pff, stuff all there in your head to discover this emptiness that he is that you are so you are this emptiness and then you feel you cannot feel emptiness because then it's not empty the emptiness remains empty but it made up the idea of what would it like to to do something uh, to act and to um, take myself away from my emptiness what would it be like and then there was this realm this place created for the mind and the free god the empty you traveled into that place which is called mind there, there was a connection the mind is connected with the emptiness but it is not empty and the emptiness is connected with the mind but it is empty it's impossible but it is possible <laughs> mind cannot understand it it only can see what happened and why this feeling of being lost came that's when the mind took too much in there was not space anymore to breathe and to, to relax the mind was over full with ideas and opinions and fear and blah blah what all what, what humanity suffers from that's mind but all the time this mind floated in a realm that was created by your own emptiness and that's why you long for emptiness, for free, for the state of freedom. And then God came in between. God is an entity that is between mind and the emptiness itself. It's a sort of what you call it. Uh, yeah, it's it's an, an energy. And that can help you find the way back. That's it. Since the only thing we know is imagination, <laughs> whatever you feel about it or want or not want that all belongs to the imagination so why not allow it to be there as it is only imagination your whole life starts in the morning when you wake up imagination starts and it ends when you fall asleep in the evening after the dream time there is the deep sleep and then Everything is gone. 
No more imagination, not a dream state, not the waking, the so-called waking state of the day. It's all gone. It was imagination. So whatever happens during this period, who cares? What does it matter? If you like it or don't like it, it is imagination like or imagination not like. So what's what's there to be done? If you think you can do something about it, it's imagination. If you think, oh, I cannot help it, it's going anyway, also that's imagination. But the last is a bit more easy for your um, for your feelings, for your sensations, although that too is imagination. <laughs> Nothing is to be experienced as imagination. So why would it be appear? Why would it be there? The only reason that imagination appears is that you your real true self see everything as imagination that means that you the seer of it is the reality if you read the book you know it is a book and you are not the book so simple you see a movie you you enjoy the movie or not you put it away but anyway you see it is the movie and i am here same way this life of imaginations see see and see it as imagination and you are the one seeing that's th that's the whole point why should it take so many lives to understand and um, realize that because the imagination is so strong it takes you to adventures and fantasies and nice days and uh, happy times and good meals and talk with friends, going out and enjoy yourself and sometimes crying because there's something doesn't work. And then it becomes a lot of crying and then a little ple less pleasure. It's the imagination is changing because it wants you to wake up. There is something inside that wants to wake up. And whatever happens in imagination, it is not the reality. But it is there to wake you up to see your own reality. That's the, the whole goal, if there is a goal. Imagination is not real. It's not real. And you know that. You knowing one only reality. When I say there is no goal in the imagination, that's true. But the imagination itself has a goal. It's not about particular stuff that happens because we are so directed to the, the, the detail. That we say, oh, that's that for there. And oh, now I understand because of that. And why should this be ha happening? And why, why, why? It always keeps us uh, caught in imagination. But the imagination itself is, is only for us to see it as imagination, not a sort of happenings in imagination. It's... it's that doesn't matter at all. It's not important. It's only to show you that it is not real. And we are in the not in the unreal happenings. We are trying to find reasons. <laughs> How is it possible that we are so lost? Because we don't know ourselves. We only know the imagination of the self and we are lost in it and we try to manipulate and make it others and make it better for us that's always the same 
you think you are in there in that imagination and then you want a better place like if you are in a prison you 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 make your prison a, a bit more com comfortable but still it's a prison and what you do in imagination that's the same you try to change the things a bit more like this more like that oh now it's better i feel good now but it's always you in the imagination in the unreality <laughs> the only reason so for imagination is not what is in it, but to see it as imagination. Here's the difference. When you think imagination has a reason, then you are in it, you are out of yourself, in that imagination, there. And you can never be happy in that lost world. But when you see the imagination as the goal to wake you up, then there is all, immediately there is the imagination there, me here, I am not in it. And that's why there is imagination. Not to go in it and to feel lost, yeah, in the beginning, and it can take a long, long time, but you will wake up and then you will see that's not real, I am real. And that's why it was there. That's the God made it up, lost, and came back you you made it up yourself you were lost in it you felt the pain and the separation and you came back and it's not about what is happening in there in that dream but that you know it's a dream and when you know that is a dream it's not about that there it's about I know it's about this here I I am not that dream, I am not that imagination, I am not that movie, I am not lost. <laughs> bye bye, it's good, it's very good to see what you are. I am a living, empty existence. If you have, for example, pain on your knee and you think you have a body, you have an incarnation, you are incarnated in a body, then you feel the knee hurts you. If you know you are the empty existence, and the body is not yours, there still is the pain in the knee. But it doesn't bother you because it is not yours. There exists pain in the knee, in the knee, but you don't, yeah, you are aware of it, but it doesn't hurt you because you are the living empty existence. That's the way to deal with pain. You practice. When you don't know anything but that you are in the morning waking up and doing your things. <laughs> Sorry, I have this. It's, the body has this locked. <laughs> and if you think you get up in the morning, you do your things, then you are the only one existing in this body and you have all its struggles all the difficulties because that's what life is it's a mixture of nice moments and troubles so that's the only thing you know but as soon as you are aware that you are in the living empty existence you have all the place is yours. You float in the endless freedom of beingness. And you see maybe here and there um, appearances, but it's far from you. There is a body over there. It's an instrument that's used by this empty existence 
to become aware of the emptiness. So it's the energy is not in the body. The body will do whatever needed. That's uh, the pro. It's programmed. But you, you are not in that body as being a prisoner and feeling all the emotions and the hurt things and a little nice uh, moment when you have a nice cup of coffee <laughs> that, that remains. You enjoy the coffee whether you are in the body or not because that's, that's something what's happened. What's happening? You are the living empty existence and you can, you are free of all but still you can enjoy all. That's so funny. You enjoy yourself in all. The beautiful flowers in the garden and the birds, you enjoy it because you are the making it possible that it feeds you and it, it's giving you um, pleasure. But without it, there still is this pleasure of being free. <laughs> so the pleasure doesn't even come from appearances. They only point to the pleasure that you are, that you have, that you, you are. This happiness, this blissful joy, Ananda. And the flowers just point to that blissful state of Ananda. <laughs> I noticed that uh, use, I used to have my coffee and then go on with things I do. And now when I have, for, for example only, when I have my coffee, it tasted, it tastes amazingly. Everything, a slice of bread with cheese, it's amazing, rich of, of flavor and it is so good and you walk and you see the sunshine it's it is feeding the, the existence of your soul it's it's touching the existence of your soul that's the beauty of being nothing <laughs> everything comes to you and touches your your bliss it makes it even more well i hope you can feel that it's a practice Practice to be the free, empty state, the living emptiness, free of all that can bother, because the bothers is only there down there in the body, and you are not incarnated in that body. The body is having its place in your free state, all the bodies, all the things. They have their place, they may be there, they are allowed to appear and disappear. And you are the one remaining. You are seeing it. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Sometimes I see um, children on a bicycle in the sunlight playing and driving around uh, on the grass enjoying themselves and then my existence floats into that little bodies of them and in their minds and in their experience and I feel the joy of riding around on my little bike in the sunlight with all my friends and I am so happy and then I wonder Am I incarnated in those little forms? As a matter of fact, you could say yes, because you are the living existence. So you did not only incarnate in this body, but you thought first all those 70 years with troubles and pain and trying to get uh, free, but then you uh, experienced and were aware it was not your incarnation at all it was just body living there experiencing life and growing through experiences and then when you see other little girls and boys playing you feel their joy 
and then you could say, mm, I am not incarnated in this body, but I am in their body also in that form. And then, no, I am not incarnated in nobody's form. I am the awareness of all the things that are experienced. And that makes me free of all the, um, the boundaries, the attachments. I am that little girl on the bike, but I am not attached on that little girl on the bike. I enjoy that little girl on the bike. And that is what life's about, to be free and still enjoy all the things appearing, all the experiences on earth by people. You are that yourself. You can feel the joy and you can feel the pain and the troubles. And you, at the same time, give the opportunity to all that what is happening because you are that free state, that free place without borders. You are that freedom in which all things appear. So you have the joy of that little girl on the bike. You are that and you are the little bird on the branch eating a worm. And you are the the all you are all you are aware and you experience all as yours but you are not attached to it i think this is the way god means what life is this is being beingness <laughs> again <laughs> being alive and remaining empty of wanting to do something to change it or to keep it or to push it away that's it life doesn't stop and experiences don't stop but you you stop to be the owner and the controller you are aware of all that is as long as you are in the body, but you are not in the body, but you, you feel the body moving. But you can also feel the bodies of the little children moving on the bike. And when they fall and hurt, they cry and you can feel their, um, their pain. Not literally, but you are aware of it and that is also what you are aware of your own pain when you hurt yourself it doesn't hurt you you are aware of the, the experience and that is being free of all what is while you are all what is you are the free existence you exist and you are not bound to it. <laughs> That's freedom. That's the most freedom. And if you think away in your own free state, all the joy comes with you of all the experiences you had. All together, all the experiences together are coming with you as a sort of glow that you are. <laughs> this is God. God is the glow of existence without particular things in it. It is all, all round. It is all. It is free of one thing but it is all that is yeah yo 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 my goodness my god what a bliss will await us 
we are really out in that state. But still it is already here now. There is hardly any difference in being a person, a so-called person, being somebody and being free of a body. There is hardly any difference. I wonder where this words come from. It's not mine, but it is mine. And it touches the riches of the souls of everyone. It is that free state that discovered itself. Blissful, blissful. Be still. Don't do. Silence. Peace will flow through your existence. Be the living emptiness. There is no person to be found in this existence. Be empty. Like the nature is empty. Your existence will be empty of uh, anything else than peace. Simple not wanting anything brings so much peace to the surface of your existence. Oh my goodness. The wanting is immediately ego coming to the surface. Why should you want anything? If you are silent, everything is complete, it's whole, it's, it's full of itself, of the bliss of itself. There's no, not a single thing that you might want if you are silent. Mm. Silence is not covered by the ego that wants something. Ego had a role to destroy the peace and the silence, but they didn't know that. 
because ego doesn't know anything. Ego is just something you want, to want, to have, to desire. That's ego. Wanting and desire. That's ego. If you don't want and you don't desire, what can there bother you? What is there that disturbs the peace? It doesn't exist if ego doesn't exist. If wanting doesn't exist, that it is full of bliss and peace. That is the empty existence. It is empty of wanting to change and to have. It spoils your existence when you want something. If you don't want anything, it is all there. Life itself is, is giving what is what is needed or what is blissful. Only not wanting makes life <sighs> blissful and peaceful empty of you. You are the emptiness of yourself. <laughs> and when you rise up, you spoil your own emptiness with wantings and ego. That's why the ego had a role, to show you that it must shut up. <laughs> Just try it. Oh my goodness. Try to have a moment without wanting anything. So much bliss. It was there all the time. The bliss is in sight. And then there is the cover of ego that kept it hidden. I want, I want peace, put the I away and put the want away. I want bliss, put the I away, put the want away. Put yourself away, <laughs> but try it, try to be still. Don't be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. It's pure love. Silence is pure love. <sighs> be blessed. Your whole personal existence is just wanting. Take a good look at yourself, at the day. How many times do you want anything? How often is there that voice inside of the ego? tells you, do that, go for that, change that. It's so, it's countless, we don't even notice it. The whole birth is because you want it in a former life, you had not finished that wanting. It is the, <laughs> the cause of the existence of your body and your mind. <coughs> Sorry. You are here because you wanted something in the former body form. And now you pay the price, but you go on wanting. 
you don't notice it. It is, it's not seen, it is not recognized. The smallest thing that you want disturbs that what is. That what is is totally full of itself. It's it's complete. It is it is blissful. It is it is my goodness. It is all existence, full of itself. And then there comes that little little person somewhere crawling on the earth and coming to shout, I want. And the whole existence is disturbed because you don't see the beauty and the bliss what is shown to you, what is given to you. You cannot receive what is given. You have no idea that you want to change God. That's the vanity of, of the people. The, <laughs> they think they are so important that they even want to destroy the God. The God where other people believe in on an other way as they. They destroy others. But, oh my goodness, they, they cannot receive the goodness of God. God gives what is everything. He is everything, giving, giving, giving. He provides in the nature and the rain and the, the earth and the sun and the, the food on the earth and the shadow for the heat and the warmth for the cold and the clothes for your body. And whatever is given to you, it is the gift of existence of, of God, of the the purest, fullest existence. And then there's this little one says, I want. Gone. It is no peace there. There is no peace there. So stop wanting. See what your ego does to you. It had its goal. Ego had only the goal to show you that you don't need ego, that you don't need anything, that everything is there for you. <sighs> Receive, be happy. That's being empty. Empty existence, empty of ego, empty of wanting, and full of the bliss of God, of existence, of <sighs> Everything is there for you. Merge in it. Merge in the bliss of God, of the good, of the beloved. He pours his goodness over you. Be grateful, be grateful and bow to the goodness. That's the self in you, the real self. There's no ego in it. It's the bliss of existence. It is the emptiness of your being. <laughs> Empty of whatever could disturb. Be happy, be happy. Are you aware that ego is always afraid? It's afraid of its own desire not being fulfilled. And it will never be fulfilled because ego is desire. As soon as something is there, it wants another thing. Ego is, is, is <laughs> it's the war of your own being. You yourself and you are love what you are is love your whole life 
is 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 loving and caring and good and the ego that rises in it for some reason the ego is afraid of you because it is afraid of love ego cannot exist in love it cannot exist in you when you don't allow it to rule you and to misform you uh, ego has a goal it arises in your being so that you may realize the goodness of yourself the love that you are you could not be aware of your beingness if there was no opposite that's ego and ego is always afraid so if you are frightened you have your ego um, made important and if you dare to let go you will feel your bliss of your being because you are love It's funny to say from yourself, I am love, but it is not this person that's... Um, it is love, but it lost its way in the ego and to protect and to, to be afraid. Ego is afraid, afraid of losing. So it continues to have um, uh, wishes and desires. And it is afraid of love because in love there is no desire and it is afraid of you your real self what you are so there are two things in you love and fear so that's it and what will um, remain is love of course love will allow the ego to rise to say its things to be uh, to be there and then let it let it flow like a cloud in the sky you are not afraid of the cloud in the sky maybe when there's a big thunderstorm and <laughs> it's it's a threat of uh, being wet but that's another sort of i i speak of the the, the form of the ego like something that's not really there it's drifting by but it can change your life completely and when you allow to drift it from by then you it doesn't bother you and so you will realize that you are love and free even if ego shows up you see it bye bye ego I see you, but you don't bother me anymore. Ego is afraid of you, and you are not afraid of ego. No, no more. <laughs>